Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome back. It seems like I've a little bit gone forever. So glad to, to be back here with you and we can finish up the rice bag today. And again, as always, if someone will pop in and let me know you're here. Good morning, Laverne, and good morning, The Quilt Show. It looks like Alex is here today. So um, I'm excited for you to finish this rice bag. Uh, you know, if I was going to be truthful with all of you, I am not um, really a bag making person. It's never been um, a high skill level for me. And so anytime I make even the simplest bag, it's very exciting to me because I'm doing this. So um, come and join the excitement with me here. The rice bag, I'm going to go over just a few things that I did last time with you to prep for today. Doing, uh, making, cutting your squares, the eight inch squares, cutting um, you know, anything that you wanted to do as far as embellishing each side and those tabs, and then we'll get to work. And I have a special little um, trick for you on putting the bag together, and it works really well anytime that you have a bag that fits inside of another. So let's get started. We'll pop down. Uh, make sure that you put your questions in the chat box and keep that going. And between um, Kristen, Alex, or I will, you know, get um, your questions answered. But let's pop down here. All right, you were to cut <clears throat> eight inch squares or make an eight inch square, whichever your preference was, and then use your throw your Sostico thread and needles to embellish them as well as some of the fabrics, whatever um, kit that you bought uh, that were in there. So this is one of my sides that I use some of the bright colors and put on there and then Shasha code around the squares. Very simple, not overly um, difficult or crazy. This was my second one. I, you know, what I love this fabric. Uh, I can see so many, many things that would be ready for this. And then Sasha code a little bit uh, up at the top. So that one, again, not overly much. This one, I tried to get a little bit uh, crazier with it. And unfortunately, I wasn't thinking when I trimmed it up. Um, so I put a row of beads along here and a little bit more Sashiko here, but I, I cut it a little short. So, you know, it's still going to be fine. Um, the flowers at the top. So again, you know, and somebody asked me why I point out the mistakes. A um, couple reasons. One is we all make them. And sometimes it's good to know that if you make a mistake, you move on and or you find a way to to work with it. I have been doing the little stitching, you know, each day. Well, I don't do it every day, but, you know, the 100 days of, of stitching and with Julie Gula. And I had this one and it fit in with the colors. And so instead of putting it aside, I just put it right on here. <clears throat> and again, no, you know, big things, just simple little, simple little patchwork on each side. Then we um, were asked to make, <clears throat> or I ask you to make these little tabs. I decided that I wanted mine four inches long. And so I, you know, cut them, I think, five by three. And the way that they're made, again, just in case that you didn't see it or you forgot. So here's my five by three. I think this may even be three and a half now that I look at. Nope, it's three. And I folded in the sides um, just a little way, a little ways until I got my four inches. And now you're going to fold them over. And you sew an eighth of an inch just to hold them in place so the ends don't move when you put them in um, your bag. And so I'm going to quickly sew this one uh, right now so that you can see how that you know, I'm just, you know, not going to do anything crazy, but I do want to make sure that my edge, my edge stays put. So I'm going to sew 
a quarter inch. My grandson was helping me, so my foot, I forgot to put my foot back right where it needed to be. He has to step on the pedal. So I'm just sewing an eighth of an inch right along there. And now I have that made. And so I've got those four made. So that was what was to be accomplished for today. And now I part of the little bit of a trick that I do is that we're going to sew the bag together. And I sewed my lining pretty much um, together today just to save some, uh, some time. But what I do... Um, I don't know if you, you know, when you make those bags that you're going to sew around, you know, the top an eighth of an inch and all of that, when I turn the bag right side out, invariably, I cannot get that part that I'm going to sew shut straight. So uh, when I was working on this bag, it was frustrating me. So I decided to try something. On the top of each of my squares, whatever was going to be the top, I folded them over one quarter inch. So I um, drew a half inch line on, on that, folded it up so the end of the piece would hit that half inch line so I knew that I had a straight quarter inch. So that when I sew them together, I already have it turned over and I don't have to worry about it. And when we put this together in a minute, you'll see what I mean. So again, I am going to work very hard and especially since this is going to be showing on the, uh, the top of the bag when I'm done. And here would be a good place that if you wanted to drop a little bit of glue and um, heat set it quickly, um, that would be a great great thing to do at this point and when we get to the other bag and I'm starting to sew it you'll see that I start and stop one quarter inch away from the edge and that is so that the corners stay um, very crisp on that so let me move the camera and we'll and I'm going to live dangerously and so my quarter inch and hope that top of the bag stays in place. Um, what I found is that pins kind of move it more so than if I just sew it straight or if I put the glue on it. So that might be something you want to think about. But I, I just found that for this bag, and, and I'm going to do it on future bags, that folding over that top just seemed to... So I'm going to stop here and at the quarter inch so that I have that crisp corner. So my corners meet. Let me go back. So my corners, you know, where my sewing starts and stops, meets at the same place. And now I have you know, my inside bag done. And I press the seams. So I just wanted to show you here. Let me find my turning tool. And I want to say to you that if you have not ever used this AppleQuick um, turning tool with the knob on the end of it to turn corners, um, you're slightly missing out. Um, it doesn't poke through your fabric and it it works really well and so you can see that I got a very nice crisp um, corner on that um, bag all right so my scent my inside is done so now we're going to work on our outside of the bag <clears throat> and I'll show you that flipping of the um, the top and lining it with interfacing. So I already put my quarter inch line on my finished top here. So I'm going to take my interfacing and that way, and I put a marking at my quarter inch on either end. 
so that I can line up my interfacing and make sure that my quarter inch at the top and bottom was right on. So I'm going to bring it here to the iron. Again, just making sure that I have my quarter inch all the way across. And now I'm going to put my interfacing in. And the reason I'm using interfacing is so that the bag will have a little bit of stiffness as it as I use it and it'll stand up and not be so floppy okay and if you have a question right now as soon as I get this ironed on and while it's cooling down just a little bit um, I'll answer whatever questions you have up to this point in the bag so let's see if there's any questions all right. Um, okay. You know, I thank you for the comments on that. Like uh, Sue and Sherry, I like yours. And Kathy, that's another one that I forget sometimes taking that 45 degree di uh, diagonal stitch on the end of that. And um, Alex said there's no mistakes. Hey, Alex, you never told me that. Opportunities, and that's exactly what they are, opportunities. All right, I'm not seeing... Um, are any more kits will be sold? Um, if, Kristen, if you could answer that one, because I do not know the answer to that. So, and if you missed out on the bags, the, the shows are always there. They're, so go back and, and take a look at the first one and you can, you can find it. So I'm not seeing any other questions and thank you for the comments um, on there. So now with the bag I'm simply going to iron over that top piece all right and if you wanted to put a you know a little bit of um, starch or precision piecing um, product on it all that will help. So now I have a smooth uh, top area. So, you know, my biggest decision is which of these am I going to put on opposite sides of each other. And so I think I'm going to start with these two, put these two aside and get my base. So I have my base and now I'm going to sew and keeping my top to the outside and I I literally lay it out so that I you know don't mess it you know don't mess that up because I want my folded edge over and my top so that when I fold the bag up this is going to be at the top so now I'm going to sew these three together all right and again lining everything up and let's let's go to the machine. And a, you know, a pin would work lovely here. Um, a drop of glue, whichever your preference is. But I'm finding that you know they're staying together pretty well. Um, this particular fabric. And I'm just going to adjust as I as I sew. And again, I'm sewing a quarter of an inch um, down. And you can mark your quarter inch where you need to stop. Or the great thing about um, the Bernina foot, and I forgot to put my, um, I'm going to have to do that here in a minute. I want to show you that on the foot, there's these little divots on the side that shows you when you've gotten to a quarter of an inch so when I get to the end of this um, and that 
divot right there is right at the end of my fabric, I know that I'm a quarter of an inch away. So um, I'm going to back that up and cut that. And now I have that quarter of an inch away from the end of that. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and press it now. Simply because for, you know, any time that I can get a chance to press it, I will. So again, I'm making sure my, my top is to the right. And flipping that over. Lining it up. And every once in a while it slips there. Okay, so now I have the first three completed. Now I'm going to put the other one on again, making sure that my top is away so that when it folds up, I will have it. Here is where you're going to take a little bit of time to make sure that you have the end lined up with, you know, your, your quarter inch seam. Okay, so if that was open and the full length of your bag, so it's it's basically starting again a quarter of an quarter of an inch away. And here I do put the pin, be you know, even though it may make a little bit of an indentation when I sew, it's better than the other result because you know it does move at that point. And I come across and do the same thing on this side. I, I just want to make sure that I have it at the correct place at that quarter of an quarter of an inch over. And I'm gonna drop a pin there. And again, I'm gonna start and stop a quarter of an inch away from the edge of what I sewed. All right. So all is good. Get this down where it needs to be, right at the quarter of a quarter of an inch. And now I can pull my pin because that's where my needle is going to go. And do a little bit of adjusting as I go. moved into there and you see I'm going to lose a little bit of the bottom of my circle and you know it's all right so I'm coming up here and I'm one stitch away from my needle and I know that when I cut my thread that it always goes up about a thread you know it goes up one so I know I'm going to get my quarter inch seam all right so now I've got that side sewn and I again I'm going to just it's easier to iron now than it it will be a little bit later and I did lose a little bit of the bottom of my ring but I don't think it looks bad I, I think it's okay um, better than I thought all right again my folded over at the top coming right sides together I'm going to pin so that that's a quarter in, you know, my seams, my outside seams match up. And 
everything lines up. So I'm going to go to this side, do the same. All right, let's go back to the machine. And I'm going to get that under there right at the quarter inch. All right, pull my pin. Make sure this is all lined up. And away we go. And when I get, you know, one stitch from that pin, then I can cut my thread because it moves about a thread's length forward. And that's just knowing your machine um, when you get to that. So I'm pressing it. All right. Now, so I've pressed that. And now it's time to make the bag. But let me go back and make sure that I don't have questions here. Um, okay, something about the internet there. I, I don't, I don't know the internet well enough to answer your questions, but, um, Yeah, I may, you know, may have made it complicated. For me, it's much easier this way. Um, okay. All right. So I don't see any other questions you know we all have different ways of doing things that make sense to us and what you've heard me say a bunch of times is i like that straight on the top and i'm just giving you another option and you know please feel free to sew it any way you want to um, and what makes the most sense to you this made sense to me and i got the result that i wanted and so i'm sharing it with you and but as always, you know, um, do it the way it, it works best for you. So I've, I've matched my, my end points here. And let's go to the machine. And again, I'm going down to the end and sewing it again a quarter of an inch away. All right, so that when this is open now, um, my my top piece, let me see if I can get it in the light. Um, you know, they're, they're together and even, and uh, I like that. So, going back, and I'm gonna touch this up with the iron just a, a bit so it's nice and firm there. And now I'm going to just keep on moving to the, the other side. Get that lined up and the other one moved just a, a hair so I'm going to drop a pin in there so it doesn't um, move on me this time get my edges lined up Okay. 
Lady. This piece of fabric just doesn't want to behave. Um, so I'll just press it again. to the machine. All right, getting it everything lined up correctly. And then my last one, um, last side to put together. And then I'm going to turn that bag, and sorry I didn't move my camera. I know that. Punch out those corners. And so now I have my, the outside of my bag. All right. Then I take my lining, and I simply set it inside of my bag. You know um, right side up instead of wrong side so I you know that the wrongs uh, the right side is is out and I'm gonna line up my corners um, here put those up against each other and here might be a place again um, I definitely use my pins, or you could use the glue, pins, whatever, um, but getting those going in opposite directions, dropping a pin in, just to hold it in place. And now, the tabs. Since you've made them, I'm going to measure in two inches from the edge uh, because I made them four inches long and that will give me about what I need a little just shy of two inches and I'm just simply going to place it about a quarter of an inch in making sure that both sides are pretty much even and then I want to bring my lining in as well at the same spot so that they're also even. And here again, a touch of glue will, will make life wonderful. So I've pinned them together.
and I put my eighth of an inch line, you know, kind of at the bottom so I know it's going to be straight all the way across. And just make sure that, that there, there's no wrinkles, no nothing like that in there. And then I drop a pin. Um, and I keep going. And then I match up these two edges. Um, I get that all pinned together. And so that, you know, everything is going, you know, opposite directions that it needs to. And I've pressed everything correctly um, in there so that that edge is right on, you know, right where it needs to be. And once I've top, once I have my my tabs all the way around on all four sides, then I would put my drawstring through the tabs. Um, the drawstring would be pulled right through there. You can use a bobkin, bodkin or whatever, and uh, your bag is complete. It's done. Once you pin this all the way around. So your top stitch and it fits right under the, you know, it fits right under your machine um, very easily on the side and you can just keep working your way around. I don't know that um, unless you say so on the thing that I need to necessarily um, do all of you know all four of these sides on and top stitch for you but then your your bag will be col absolutely complete and that's how simple it is and i want to go and find um see if there's any other questions here yeah you do think of questions and that's where the forum comes in um after i'm i'm done we think when the when the live is over, go back to the forum and ask your questions. Or if you have other questions on the bottom left hand side of your screen is my email address. If the forum isn't, it, you can't get in and, and make it work for you, then just email them to me and I will take care of your questions throughout the week. Um, And Arda, um, on the tube one where, you know, the main fabric first, you know, where you're doing it like a tube, I'm not sure um, because I haven't seen that pattern of this, but my suggestion would be that, uh, you know, go back and check your squares and possibly if that keeps happening, make your, your bottom just a little bit um, Either make sure you have a true quarter inch seam or uh, double check that, you know, the size is, is you know, my best advice without seeing the pattern. Um, is there a reason you don't backstitch at the quarter inch? The reason, um, and I'm the problem child, no, that's because my machine, I have it set for... Uh, you know, cutting the thread and knotting it. So it is already secured. But absolutely, if your machine does not have that, you know, um, feature on it, then yes, you would have to backstitch. And who knows, maybe it's better to backstitch even with that. Um, commenting on YouTube through Safari. Uh, yeah, if you could go to Chrome, that would that might help you. You know, um, with this, I'm not sure. So, yeah, just change. Um, iPhone always seems to, seems to be okay. All right, that's the questions that I'm seeing right now. I'm a Baby Star member. I love it. What about using interfacing on bottom to stiffen? Yes, go right ahead. That's that's perfect. In my first bag I did, I just ran out of interfacing on this one and I didn't have any more. 
And I was gone this past week to Michigan for a retreat and didn't have the time to go find it. So I just left it off the bottom. But my sides seem to be holding it up real well and I didn't need it on the bottom. But I certainly could go back and put it on there. So um, those are great questions. And again, you know, um, I, you know, figure out things that work for me that make my life you know, a little bit easier on this. And, but, you know, if you have a way that works really well for you and you get the results that you want every time, please stick with it and go for it. And this is just another possibility. I just like folding it over and getting all those seams done so I don't have to turn the bag and try to make that work. I want to show you a picture that one of the ladies... Um, oh, this was from the last quilt, you know, we did the handmade quilt and a woman who had never done Lemoyne stars before and the method that we use to get sharp points. Look at that center. Isn't that beautiful? This is Sue. And here's another, um, picture of her, um, Oh, no, that's Rebecca. Rebecca sides to her quilt. Isn't that beautiful? Um, she used, I know she used several different things to get that result um, on there. So beautiful work. And then let's see what this one has. Uh, let's see if I can get to it. Nope, that was my other thing. Well... Okay, I'm being kind of lame today. There we go. Um, but tried it and the method that we showed on there and look at those points. So Sue, good job. Good, good job. It was beautiful. Anyway, any if there's any other questions, next week we're going to start on a new project. We're going to be doing a MOLA. So we're moving from Japan to uh, South America. And I'm excited about that. They had kits for sale on the site. And those are beautiful. Let me grab one for you. This is a three-in-one project bag. We're going to be doing three projects where we're, where we're going to use um, solids and... I, I just find that all this is so pretty and quite lovely. Let me drop down and see if you can see it better on the table. Um, but you get these gorgeous threads. You get needles in the package. So we're going to be doing MOLA next week. And then we'll be doing um, a, a quick lesson on Hawaiian quilting and then Teveve. So we're kind of, you know, crossing the globe and trying things from different countries and their methods for using stuff. You get a, a 10, you know, a layer cake of, you know, uh, solids to choose from. And then you get some backing materials um, as well in yardage. And it's absolutely um, a gorgeous set of fabrics. So if you, if you want to try and uh, work through those three classes in the next um, three weeks this would be this would be a lovely package to have so we will we'll see you next week for mola um, and i'll give you a little bit of history not much um, just a, a little bit of of how it came to be and and what it is and right before i say goodbye uh, how do you put the ends of the cording together well, I, when I when you go through, you start on one side and go all the way around, and you have two, and you uh, you know you have your two ends hanging. Then your second piece of cording goes through the opposite direction, and I tie a very tight knot at the end of the two that I've put through first, and then the the other two. So you're going to have the pull on opposite sides of the bag, and when you pull it shut. And I don't have my bag um, here. I took it with me um, to Michigan. And that was one thing I guess did not get out of the suitcase uh, since we I just got back. So I apologize for that. Um, let me see if there's anything else. 
earth scrap friendly and useful bag. There you go. What kind of cording do you use? Um, really, any any type of, of cording. What we had in the um, the kit was just a white cotton cording that you can buy at your you know your quilt store. Um, you can buy it at you know the big box stores, whatever. Um, you can create your own. You can make your own um, at you know bias tape ones, all of that. If you did not buy the kit, um, all right. That's the questions that I see. Um, my Roxanne's glue doesn't hold at all, um, and yes, that could be the problem. Um, that if it's too old, but I but I honestly find that this um, Acorn Precision piecing glue, and then you heat set it. You know, just tap your iron to it once you put it on. Um, it holds so much better and it washes out, um, you know, once you wash the bag or whatever or whatever you're, you're doing, your quilt. So I find this to be more helpful than I did the rock sands because it takes too long for the rock sands to dry and I'm impatient. And what is a mola? A mola is the method that the people from South America use to make their clothing and their quilts. And it has some um, reverse applique um, involved with it in many layers. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you, especially if you like hand stitching, it's great. Um, but you, you certainly could um, improvise and do that on your machine. So that's what that is. All right. Um, so we'll see you next Saturday morning. Thank you for being here, and I hope you enjoy your rice bags. Um, they're great little things, and to carry irons to retreats and other thing, they work really well, and that's exactly what I did. I took my first bag that I made, and I put my iron and a few other scraps and things that I needed in it, and it was perfect in the suitcase. So have a great week, and I'll see you next week.